Welcome back to FNTV at MWC 25. I'm Steve Saunders and I'm excited for our next chat show where we're going to be getting stuck into the detail of AI's role in wireless networks. And to help me with this, I'm joined by three industry experts who are helping shape the future of wireless communications. Uh, Balaji Ragottaman from Keysight, uh, Harjot Saluja, founder and CEO of Reach, uh, and Joel Stradling, our colleague from IDC. Welcome to all of you. Um, let me start with you, Balaji. How uh, can wireless AI enhance IoT applications in networks? AI has been shown to be quite powerful in a lot of facets of wireless communication, specifically when it comes to IoT devices. They, they need a lot of QoS optimization, traffic flow shaping, and so on. And these have been shown to be very powerful areas where AI can have a big influence. Well, that sounds like a positive impact, certainly. Harjot, what do you think about this? Uh, I think I agree. I think the, you know, AI has been already being used from before, you know, in the old form of machine learning. Mm -hmm. And now we have come to the next generation of it, if you will, uh, to optimize how these devices communicate because with IoT, you have a large scale, right? You're not working with individual consumers and AI works very well with large scale, right? Because you, know, you have a machine sort of doing the optimization as opposed to people. Right. And what sort of scale of network are we talking about here? Exponentially larger than the challenges of a consumer network? Yeah, I mean, think about number of devices you use today in your daily life versus if you go back 10 years, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you got, of course, the devices you interact with yourself, but then there are devices that are interacting with what we do everyday life, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we are going from having less than one device per, you know, in one human's life to multiple devices, right? right. So that kind of brings that scale yeah. uh, in the developed countries. And then you have emerging markets where there was you know, a fraction of a device, you know, interacting with a human. And now you got, you know, multiple of those devices with the cost coming down. Yeah. So, so yeah, massive scale, you know, and I think AI does well when it comes to, you know, solving massive scale connectivity, uh, optimization and experience. Excellent. Yeah. Joel, tell us the, uh, give us a, I'll come back to you in a second. But, uh, Joel, tell us, uh, are there security implications for AI in wireless networks? Yeah, there, there certainly are. I mean, I think the, in terms of applications, the sky's the limit with, especially as we move to 5G and faster speed, you know, when you've got a thousand times the bandwidth, mm. you can do far more amazing things. Um, and the applications and use cases could be, could be a multitude. Um, and AI will be a part of those applications, you know, operating. It's all about large volumes of data. Um, and manual tasks don't fit, aren't, well, they're no longer fit for tasks. You know, you cannot uh, manually monitor security incidents on a, on a, on a wireless um, application that has AI. Mm -hmm. So AI will be applied actually to strengthen cybersecurity and enable to make companies or allow companies to move quickly, to mm -hmm. innovate and develop these uh, incredible use cases. I think we, we shall see. Mm -hmm. You need to have um, AI-backed cybersecurity in place. Um, I, I, you're a glass half full fellow, aren't you? Because I think it comes from the territory. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I appreciate it. I think you're, you're taking the right approach. Actually, I feel positive about things overall. In the U.S., where I live, uh, uh, the uh, environment is becoming almost completely uh, unregulated, deregulated, as far as the development of next generational technologies, specifically AI. We have unregulated AI in nuclear power stations in North America, which I think is a terrible idea. In that environment, doesn't it increase security risks to have AI involved in wireless networks? Well, it certainly does um, if there is no correct AI governance mm. in place. Um, on the point of regulations, the US innovates, the Asians imitate, and the Americans and the Europeans regulate. Right. That's something that we see, you know. It, it, it's, 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 um, it's a kind of a stereotype, but there's something in that. So within Europe, so for example, we have the EU AI Act, and those things are being looked at very careful, carefully. It could be that the European markets will be a beacon of light for driving AI governance programs forward. Mm. And I think, again, those frameworks are required. It, Glass half empty, half full argument, I get that, because, you know, we don't want security to be, to be the department of no. We've gone past that stage. Mm. But again, in order to go quickly, you need to have um, good frameworks in place, and AI governance is a big part of that. Mm. Yeah, I think there's, there's some truth hiding in all stereotypes, isn't there? But at the moment, as an American 
working in technology, I would say uh, most Americans are worried and most Europeans are frustrated and uh, most, uh, most people working in technology in China are about 10 years ahead as far as a lot of this stuff. And that's, that's, a, that's a dangerous situation for, for our industry right now. So what do you think, Balaji? How important is uh, this AI trend for Keysight? Oh, Keysight, I mean, as a company that provides test and measurement solutions, we have a kind of a two-pronged role. You know, one is just like the rest of the industry or the rest of every single sector of industry in globally, mm. we are using AI to improve our own solutions and our own instruments that we offer as services and solutions. At the same time, um, the bigger part of our role is to uh, react to the, the use of AI and the emergence of AI in wireless networks and how in this new milieu we will test and measure and characterize performance because it's a whole new world. Um, things are not uh, the sort of the stationary implementations of the past where yeah. you need, you test once and then you deploy it and you forget it. It's a living thing, the algorithm as such. And so you have to take special care in ongoing performance testing and also um, you know, looking ahead to all the sort of the risks that can uh, yeah. entail. Uh, so uh, there is a industry-wide debate, uh, and I would say that Keysight is playing a leading role in shaping that debate in terms of test methodologies mm. for 6G and AI as it's, such. It's sort of n-dimensional, isn't it? Because you've got uh, 6G, which is going to be faster, and it's going to have lots of different capabilities. Uh, but then you combine it with IoT and digital industrialization, where we get a network of trillions at some point, and those for Keysight, uh, for security experts, and for you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really challenging. Do you still feel uh, optimistic uh, about the whole situation, Hajjad? Um, you know, with respect to AI, you mean? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, look, you know, Reach is in the business of, you know, Shopifying the telecom vertical, right? Mm. We are making it simple and easy for people to monetize telecom assets, create new applications, may it be mobile, fixed wireless, ISP, so for us, you know, we are using AI the same way, like internally, but also uh, we have like an AI interactive video conversationalist that can create a mobile service for you, right? You know, you talk to it, you tell what you like, tell what kind of things you want to do. Mm. Like, if you think about that, if you go back 10 years, that to build something like that would cost millions of dollars, yeah. right? You know, to put it together. And now you can do it at almost no cost, right? So I think, yes, you know, I think, Certainly hopeful with that. Uh, and I think, you know, yes, you have to also be careful with respect to the downside of some, you know, things kind of going too fast. Like, you know, like you said, you know, you have to be uh, kind of create that balance. But we feel pretty good about the, the value we are getting as a company and giving it to our customers leveraging AI. Fantastic. Guys, it's really great that you're here and that you're talking about all of these issues, which are really going to be critical to our industry and that we're thinking about them now. Thank you all very much for being such a great panel. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you very much.